Dream Children a Reverie. It is part of Elia and the Last Essays of Elia by Charles Lamb. Children love to listen to stories about their elders when they were children, to stretch their imagination to the conception of the traditionary great uncle or grandma, whom they never saw. It was in this spirit that my little ones crept about me and other evening to hear about their great grandmother field who lived in a great house in norfolk a hundred times bigger than that in which they and papa lived which had been the scene so at least it was generally believed in the in that part of the country of the tragic incidents which they had lately become familiar with from the ballad of the children in the wood certain it is that the whole story of the children and their cruel uncle was to be seen fairly carved out in wood upon the chimney piece of the great hall the whole story down to the robin red breast till a foolish rich person pulled it down to set up a marble one of the modern invention in its stead with no story upon it here Alice put out one of her dear mother's looks, too tender to be called a braiding. Then I went to say how religious and how good their great grandmother field was, how beloved and respected by everybody. Though she was not intended the mistress of this great house, but had only the charge of it, and yet in some respect she might be said to be the mistress of it too committed to her by the owner who preferred living in a newer and more fashionable mansion which he had purchased somewhere in the adjoining country but still she lived in it in a manner as if it had been her own and kept up the dignity of the great house in sword while she lived which afterwards came to decay and was nearly pulled down and all its old ornaments stripped and carried away to the owner's other house where they were set up and looked as awkward as if someone were to carry away the old tombs they had seen lately at the abbey and stick them up in ladies cs tawdry gilt drawing room here john smiled and much as to say that would be foolish indeed and then i told how when she came to die her funeral was attended by a concourse of all the poor and some of the gentry too of the neighborhood for many miles round to show their respect for her memory because she had been such a good and religious woman so good indeed that she knew all the psaltery by heart a eh? and a great part of the testament besides here little alice spread her hands then i told what a tall upright graceful person their great grandmother field once was and how in her youth she was esteemed the best dancer here Alice's little right foot played an involuntary movement till, upon my looking grave, it desisted. The best dancer, I was saying, in the country, till a cruel disease called a cancer came and bowed her down with pain. But it, would, it could never bend her good spirit or make them stoop. But they were still upright, because she was so good and religious then i told how she was used to sleep by herself in a lone chamber of the great lone house and how she believed that an a partition of two infants was to be seen at midnight gliding up and down the great staircase near where she slept but she said those innocents would do her no harm or how frightened i used to be though in those days i had my maid to sleep with me because i was never half so good or religious as she 
and yet I never saw the infants. Here John expanded all his eyebrows and tried to look courageous. Then I told how good she was to all her grandchildren, having us to the great house in the holidays, where I in particular used to spend many hours by myself in gazing upon the old bust of the twelve seizures that had been emperors of Rome, till the old marble's head would seem to live again, or I to be turned into marble with them. How I never could be tired with roaming about that huge mansion with its vast empty rooms with their worn out hangings, fluttery tapestries and carved oaken panels with the gilding almost rubbed out. Sometimes in the spacious old fashioned gardens which I had almost to myself unless when now and then a solitary gardening man would cross me. And how the nectarines and peaches hung upon the walls without my ever offering to pluck them because they were forbidden fruit. Unless now and then and because I had more pleasure in strolling about among the old melancholy looking yew trees or the firs and picking up the red berries and the four apples which were good for nothing but to look at or in lying about upon the fresh fresh grass with all the fine garden smells around me or basking in the orangery till I could almost fancy myself ripening too along with the oranges and the limes in that graceful warmth or in watching the days that darted to end and fro in the fish pond at the bottom of the garden with here and there a great sulky pike pike hanging midway down the water in silent state as if it mocked at their impertinent frisking i had more pleasure in these Busy idle diversion then in all the sweet flavors of peaches, nectarines, oranges, and such like common baits of children. Here John slyly deposited back upon the plate a bunch of grapes, which, not unobserved by Alice, he had meditated dividing with her, and both seemed willing to relinquish them for the present as irrelevant. Then in somewhat a more heightened tone I told how, though their great-grandmother Field loved all her grandchildren, yet in an special manner she might be said to love their uncle John L. Because he was so handsome and spirited a youth and a king of the rest of us, and instead of mopping about the solitary corners like some of us, he would mount the most metalsome horse he could get, when but an important no bigger than themselves, and make it carry him half over the country in a morning, and join the hunters when there were any out, and yet he loved the old great house and gardens too, but had too much spirit to be always pent up within their boundaries and how their uncle grew up uh, grew up to man's estate as brave as he was handsome to the admiration of everybody but of their great grandmother field most especially and how he used to carry me upon his back when i was lame footed boy for he was a uh, good but older than me many a mile when i could not walk for pain and how in afterlife he became lamb-footed too. And I did not always, I fear, make allowance enough for him when I was impatient, and in pain not remember sufficiently how considerate he had been to me when I was lame-footed, and how when he died, though he had not been dead an hour, it seemed as if he had died a great while ago, such a distance there is betwixt life and death, and how I bore his death as I thought pretty well at first, but afterwards it haunted 
and haunted me and though i did not cry to take it to part as some do and as i think he would have done if he had died yet i missed him all day long and knew not till then how much i had left him i missed his kindness and i missed his crossness and wished him to be alive again to be quarreling with him for we quarreled sometimes rather than not have him again and was an uneasy without him as he their poor uncle must have been when the doctor took off his limb here the children fell a crying and asked if their little mourning which they had on was not for uncle john and they looked up and prayed me not to go on about their uncle but to tell them some stories about their pretty dead mother then i told how for seven long years in hope sometimes sometimes in despair yet persisting ever i quoted the fair alice w and and as much as children could understand i explained to them what coyness and difficulty and denial mean in maidens when suddenly turning to alice the soul of the first alice looked out at her eyes with such a reality of representment that i became in doubt which of them stood there for me or whose that bright hair was and while i stood gazing both the children gradually grew a fainter to my view receding and still receding to nothing at last but two mournful features were seen in the uttermost distance which without speech strangely impressed upon me the effects of speech we are not of alice nor of the nor are we children at all the children of alice called bertram father we are nothing less than nothing and dreams we are only what might have been and must wait upon the tedious source of least million of ages before we have existence and name and immediately walking i found myself quietly seated in my bachelor armchair where i had fallen asleep with the faithful bridget unchanged by my side but john l james elia was gone forever thank you for watching bye bye take care and links are in description box if you want to contact me good luck for exams have a great day